Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert, November 15th, 2021. And, got a special request today, so we're going to get right to that right away. We're going to talk a little bit about solar and battery banks and inverters and that kind of stuff. But, uh, those of you who are aren't interested stick around anyway you might learn something and it might be valuable all right so here we are the question was he wants to change from a 12 volt system up to a 24 volt system and uh, what's involved with that and so forth and so on so here's what we're going to do first of all your inverter, of course, has to be rated for 24 volt input, not 12 volt input. Okay, so that's the inverter has to be changed. He knows that. He's get thinking about getting a backup inverter, but going for 24 volts, and uh, then switching things over. Okay, so your inverter will have to be changed over. I'm pretty sure he's running a, the Midnight Classic, so. He should be okay with the controller because the controller will um, handle 12 or 24 or 36 or 48 volts and that's why you have to connect your battery bank to your inverter uh, to your controller first and then the, that tells the controller what voltage you're going with okay so you don't have to change your controller, but there will be a few settings that you have to uh, modify if you've got it customized. So anyway, so it on mine it's a 12 volt system, so it's showing the batteries are at 13.6. So if it was a 24 volt system, which he's going to be going to, this would say something like uh, uh, 25 7 or something to that effect, or 26 2. Or, whatever as long as it was higher than 24 volts so the uh, controller would take care of all of that now he asked about the solar panels do you need to change your solar panels well yes and no okay since you're going to a 24 volt system if you have um, all your solar panels are basically for a 12 volt system and you've got them hooked in parallel all in parallel then you will not have enough voltage input to overcome the 25 volts you need to charge your battery bank so you see mine says it's got I've got 95.5 volts coming in that's right because I have my solar panels which are basically just regular 12 volt solar panels and I have those hooked in series so I kicked the voltage up to 96 volts. So this would, the way mine is set up, would have no problem charging 12 volt, um, 24 volt, 36 volt, or 48 volt, or even 96 volt, because this got, this a lot of times is up over 100, like 110. But uh, uh, the bottom line is you don't have to do much to your solar panels as long as you've got more than the 25 volts coming in that you need to charge your 24 volt battery system okay so how do you hook up the batteries was the next question he had how do you connect batteries to handle uh, 24 volts and he's gonna have 16 batteries so two four six eight so there's eight there so he's going to say he has uh, two sets of these eight. Okay, I'm in a 12 volt system. So in my system, I connect the first battery and the second battery, positive to negative, or positive to negative, and that makes these two a single 12 volt battery. So now you want to make a 24 volt battery. So you would go to the next two batteries, which would be another 12 volts, and you hook those together here but then you would also hook this one to this one okay so you'd have one two three of the small jumpers between them that hooks the, them in series 
and that would give you four batteries, two 12 volt packs total, that would be all tied together and would end up being a um, 24 volt battery. Now, then you do your, your parallel connections. So this would, say these, this four would be the, hooked up the same way with the, the three little pigtails going in between them. So then, instead of this one um, connecting here, this would go straight from the first pole of the first four batteries to the first pole of the second four batteries, positive to positive. So you wouldn't have a jun junction in the middle here. It'd be one straight long connection going all the way across. And you do the same thing on the back on your uh, negative connections. You would go from the negative pole of the first set of uh, first battery um, or first set of batteries all the way to the second set. So in other words, one, two, three, four. So this is where your, um, your first parallel connection would go all the way over to the end. All right. So basically, just look at it simply as breaking it down into four 24 volt batteries. So you're going to have one, two, three, four times six is 24 volts. So you would tie positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative to get your four batteries all connected in series. And then you would go positive to the next set of positive. Uh, the next positive on the next set and same thing negative on the first set to the to the negative on the second set All right, and then you do that to the third set fourth set whatever Okay, now try to when you're doing this try to arrange your batteries in such a way that you have them um, in a position where you can use uh, pretty much all the same length um, wiring for everything and if you got if you got one wire um, or this one wire running between here and then uh, the next one is a foot long instead of uh, eight inches long, well, you're changing your um, resistance in your wires. So you're not gonna get the most efficient uh, voltage out of your batteries. Try to keep your connections all the same length. So that's why I got one, two, three. These are all basically the same length and then same thing in the back, one, two, three on the parallel connections. And then of course, all my um, series connections are all the same S size shape and size, okay? So pretty simple. If you did them in line like I have them here, this is what you would be looking at, okay? So this, these four would make one 24 volt battery. All right. If you did them in uh, square groups of four, you would have a longer cable in between the first 12 volt and the second 12 volt to make the 24. So this is not a very efficient way to do it, but it can be done this way. As long as all four of your um, quads are all set up exactly the same with the same length wires. It'll still work, but it's not the most efficient. All right. Um, if you have a turbine, like I do, you cannot use a 12 volt turbine to bring power in to charge a 24 volt battery system because it doesn't produce enough voltage. Okay, it won't overcome the uh, 25 and uh, 25.6 volts that you need to charge your 24 volt system so now keep in mind that if you do have a PMA or you're planning on getting a PMA and you're switching to a 24 volt system then you would have to of course uh, get a 24 volt output PMA and for those of you who are new and don't know what PMA is, that means permanent magnet alternator. And that means that inside the alternator, it's using permanent magnets. Unlike uh, the old car automobile um, alternators had uh, 
um, you had to have power input into the alternator to get power output on the old alternators. So unlike a generator, where all you have to do is crank a generator and you got output uh, on the old alternators, it had to be connected to a battery first and have some voltage going into the alternator to activate the electromagnets that were in it, not because they didn't have permanent magnets back then. And the electromagnets would allow the alternator to produce AC current. And then you'd have a voltage regulator, which was basically a bridge rectifier that uh, would uh, uh, control the three wires coming out of the alternator would go to down to two wires that could go to the battery. All right, just a little automotive trivia there. So, uh, see, we got the controller co covered, we got the panels covered, and we got the uh, battery groupings covered. And uh, remember, if you're going to 24 volts from 12 volt, you can use smaller wire um, for your wiring, but if you've already got the wires and all you have to do is add a couple, stay with the larger wire. The less resistance you have in those wires connecting your batteries, the more efficient your power is going to be. So if you're, if you're already using um, number two or one aught or something to, like, to that effect, don't go to smaller wires all the way around. Spend the money to get the few extra pieces of wire you need to stay with the larger wire. Uh, you'll get less resistance. Uh, you already got the, uh, the main part of the wiring. So instead of replacing everything at a different cost, just add on what you need, okay? All right, I hope that covers it all because uh, like I said, you might learn something today. And the thing that you're going to learn is there's a secret keyword to the 5555 giveaway. And that keyword for today is coins. C-O-I-N-S, coins. Like what the prizes are, the, the coins. So down in, if you want to get your first entry in on this giveaway, in the comment section below, Put the word coins, C-O-I-N-S, and uh, put today's date, November 15th. So your entries will be good until it is November 16th. So if you don't watch this video until tomorrow, you've missed out on the first entry. No entries will be accepted after midnight tonight. Uh, if you've got your entry in before midnight, it'll be okay, it'll get on the list. If you don't get it in until after midnight or, or tomorrow, then it will not be on the list. But there'll be another opportunity to, to coming down the line on one of the next videos between now and the 20th. Uh, everything is has to do with fives on this uh, giveaway 5555 was the subscriber